For the last six months, I've been visioning climate futures with about 50 designers at Innovation Consultancy IDEO because I believe futuring will be a powerful tool in our collective climate action. So come with me to 2034. Let's check it out. Last night, I went down and I watched the offshore wind turbines in the bay, you know, the ones they made into sculptures so folks would let them be built by the hundreds. And looking up, I could see all the satellites between the stars analyzing for methane leaks and biomatter loss. Really beautiful. I freelance in auditing greenhouse gases, so I'll get a ping to check out a site where there might be a leak or where reforestation might be working, and then I'll take a bunch of photos, and they use it for emissions accounting and training the spatial image analysis. My last gig was verifying the algae bloom happening off the coast of Chile, and since the government had offered a cleanup bounty to protect their biodiversity credits, there was a rush of folks there to harvest and sell to the bioplastics market. And with the algae bloom feeding the global bioplastics market, there's been so much more algae-based product in shops right now. I just got my IKEA mycelium stool and lamp too. And I've been redecorating my apartment in the regenerative style, which has been a lot easier because of the tax credits that we all have. But you know, that means consumption and we're all trying to reduce while we land this transition from fossil fuel production within our individual carbon rations. And I still sometimes buy stuff, you know, it's hard to change. But Things have also gotten more expensive with the global tax from the Re Ministry of Regeneration that goes to pay out reparations to climate impacted countries. I've been trying to stay away from stuff with a carbon rating of less than three, but often that's the good stuff. And I did get some fines this week. So I joined one of these consumer anonymous groups. It's been helpful to just kind of talk to people who are also struggling in the shift to consume less and to shift from single use to reusable. Fortunately, that's been a little bit easier lately um, and that's largely because of the universal reusable packaging system that we're all now required to use. Um, and I love how I can pick up takeout now in an airport in Tokyo and return that container in any store in the world, including here in San Francisco. My home is getting a little full of these standardized packages, but um, I actually love that the, the universal reusable packaging mandate killed custom container shapes and labeling, um, that now all the brand is sort of expressed digitally. Um, and it feels like I'm actually learning a lot more and I just have less stuff to deal with in my house. And since they halted the fashion production and we're all using, uh, we're supposed to be reusing clothes for the next hundred years, I rent new outfits with my Rent Anywhere card from any store, anywhere in the world. And it's fun to see all the people who have owned it in the last 10 years as well. Anyway, last night after I watched the wind turbines, I picked up my car, which I'd left charging one of these supercharged streetlights. And I made a few bucks on the way home, swapping out my battery at one of the, um, the swap station um, between here and Marin. Honestly, this whole decarbonized grid movement has been great. My apartment is tiny and like most people now, I've got one table for cooking, charging, heating the space in the gas era. This would have taken so much more space, but now that we've electrified everything, my life is full of simpler things. And like everyone else, my neighborhood is part of a distributed energy community plugged into the city grid, but producing energy all day guided by software to help us optimize production with the weather. And more and more, life has been like that, individuals functioning as an ecosystem. So back to 2023, the world you just visited is part of an effort we've been doing to create speculative conditions for the future with industrial designers, emerging technologists, anthropologists, and certainly we are mostly wrong about the future, but that's not the point. Designing our way out of the climate crisis must consider future scenarios and friends, we are short on vision. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has a 40-page PDF of text, and really text is most of what you get if you search for climate futures. How can we be expected to derive without the destination in mind? Numbers just don't shift hearts. We also need to be able to collectively picture shifts down to the minutia, down to the mundane, and we need to be able to get excited about that picture in our minds. So this is one of the most widely circulated, non-dystopic visualized climate futures. And it's from a yogurt company, Chopani. The fictive community has brought us some wonderful books and recently a TV series, but we need more. We need more to picture and think about together. So we've been sketching the human angle of futures, behaviors, products, rituals, and our goal has been to create stimuli visually rich enough to get wheels turning, to light a fire under the organizations that we work with, and ultimately to start hard conversations. And we need more, one for each life, for your life, what does your life look like in a climate impacted 2030? No, really, what just flashed in your brain? 
Let's get more of those visions born and out into the world. Thank you.